folks, this is Tina from Bittersweet Quilt Shop and Home Decor. Today I am going to show you how to make a bow tie square. Now this is the traditional way, maybe the way your grandma made them. This one here is probably pre-1950. Um, and they would use five separate pieces of fabric to create this. But today I'm going to show you how to do it, kind of an origami style, using a charm pack. So I'm featuring Modus charm pack. Today this is Holiday Medley. And we're going to go ahead and make one of them using one at a time and take one of your charm packs pieces you're going to fold it in half and here's a little key you want to make sure that your fabric is always right sides touching each other so fold it and you're going to finger press it really well you're going to open it up and do it in the opposite direction the same way finger press it really well you do not need to use an iron the only reason you need to finger press it really well is so that you can see the indentations because you need to see that in order to go on to the next um, fold. So now folding it right sides together, because remember that's key, make sure the right sides are touching. You're going to pinch it on one of the folds and then you're going to bring the piece of fabric next to it all the way back to the fold. And I do use applique pins to pin it in place. They're smaller and they don't get in the way um, when you're using your thread and needle later. So this is what it should look like. Now, holding it where the pin is, I want you to go directly directly to the next fold. Where the fold is, you're going to pitch it together again, right sides touching, and you're going to bring the piece of fabric back to that fold as well, okay, and pin it in place. And this is what it's looking like so far. And then you go directly from that pin to the next fold, and you're going to do it again. You're going to do this all the way around, so you're doing all four sides of your square, all right? And I'm going to use one long pin because I just want to show you how it's just way too large for this project. Okay, once you're done, it should look like this. Okay? All right. Maybe you remember these from school. Remember we used to make these and you'd put in there, he loves me, he loves not, yes or no, red, white, and blue, and we used to go like this and pop them open. Well, that's kind of the same form. And this is really a form of origami. Now, it looks like this on the one side and it looks like this on the other. Put that on the table. Slap it down, it kind of squares it up like so. Take your needle with thread in it, put a knot at the end of your um, thread. What you're going to do is you're going to slip your needle right through the fold, and you're only going through the fold. You're not going through this piece of material down here. And you're going to go in the center, not on the ends, but in the center. And you're going to create a gathering stitch. So you're going to go all the way around onto each fold. And make sure you're not going in too far. You only want to grab it on the fold. This doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you do want to make sure that it's in the center of each one of those lines. Okay? You'll do it until you get all the way back to where you began. Once you're done, it looks like this. You'll sit it on the table, put your finger right in the center, and then pull on your gathering string. And this will create four little petals. And it looks like that. At this point, pull all of your pins out, because we no longer need those. Keep your needle and thread attached, because you, you do need this. Okay, so now it looks like this. Put two and two petals together, and then you're going to whip stitch, because remember you're still attached. You're going to whip stitch right through the folds. I normally take about four stitches. I go to the end, and I go right to the point. Then I come back with about two stitches and go to the other end. And then I knot it off. And it should look like this. Let me just grab my sample. Should look like this when you're finished. All right. Then all you do is just take it, pull the two wings, and then ta-da, you have a bow tie. Okay. You do want to use steam in your iron. Kind of line it up or manipulate the bow a little bit. Make sure it's square. Then I steam in place on both sides. And then you do need a three and a half inch ruler. Now, in at Bittersweet Quilt Shop, we do um, sell creative grids because they're made in the United States, and they have these wonderful grippers on the other side, and they have these wonderful large numbers and dashes that you can see. So what we do? There's a little dot in the middle of this. You place it in the middle of your bow tie, so it's in the center, and then you take your rotary cutter and you square this up so it is a finished three and a half inch block. Now you can do the same method using a layer cake. Moda has layer cakes that are pre-cut 10 inches and this is a layer cake that I did into a bow tie. You can see it. Um, and you will need a seven and a half inch ruler to square this up. 
but so simple. You can sit in the evening and just watch TV or whatever you want to do and make these little bow ties and then put them together. I'm going to show you a little table runner that I did and this pattern is available in the shop. It's called Papa's Bow Tie. And here it is. And all I did is I used one charm pack. I took the dark colors and I made bow ties. I took the lighter colors and I made blocks. Now you'll notice that I have a few blocks that are different like pieced together. Well what happened was I ran out of the lighter colors so when I squared up these lighter colors to a three and a half inch square I had one long piece. So I took those long pieces and using a one eighth of an inch seam allowance I could then create this and then square this up into a three and a half inch block. All right. So you could actually make two of these out of one charm pack. And then another one that I just created because I made so many demonstrations uh, for this block. Next thing I knew, I had an entire charm pack done up. So we took Moda's Christmas Spirit Collection, and all of these are bow ties. And then I every every other one is going in a different direction. So this one is going from here to here, and then this one goes from here to here. The bows, if you can see them, and there are no um, spacers in between. And this is the border that I created, and a customer showed me how to make this. This is an open wing flying geese. And in my next, next demonstration, I'm going to show you how to make that. And it's so simple. You're not going to believe it. It is the easiest way to make a flying geese. All right. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.